we've just had our asses handed to us on national television by Accrington fucking Stanley. <laughs> fucking spineless fucking wankers. Oh dear, we are in trouble. I don't, I don't, I don't want to post these videos on this channel anymore. I don't want to do it. I don't want to have to put rant in the title and shout at a camera for 15 minutes. I don't want to do that anymore. Because that's not what this channel is about. This channel is spreading some positivity, you know, trying to be upbeat with my videos. But I can't do that right now. And I think if anyone that is watching this video, if you were in the same position as me, I think the majority of you would be feeling the same way. And as you saw from that opening clip, you can tell that I'm not happy. That's his understatement of the year. To put it in its correct terms, I am fucking raging. I am, I am, I'm furious. I can't even give myself time to calm down because I need to film it as soon as physically possible. So, so it is as raw of a reaction as physically possible. Because I need to let everything out. I need to let it all out. Two wins in ten. Two wins in ten games. We are now outside of the top six as we have lost 2-0 to Accrington Stanley tonight. They commanded the game. They dominated, they were better, they finished the chances off, they kept us at bay, their goalkeeper Nathan Baxter was on crack. They deserved it, they were the better team, fair play. But from a Cholton Athletic perspective, to say that we just had our asses handed to us on national television by Accrington Stanley is a humiliation. And as I've said for the past weeks or month now, it hasn't changed since that MK Dons performance. Ever since Boya slagged off the fans at MK Dons, ever since that night, it's just been a downward decline since then. And at this point, I don't know when or where it gets better. After watching 90 minutes of spineless lethargic, incompetent players who just looked like they didn't give a shit half the time. Two Bob fucking wankers running around the pitch for 90 minutes, all game. After watching that, I'm just beyond caring at this point. I just can't be arsed, you know what I mean? <sighs> so let's get into talking about the game, man, eh? because that's what this video is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a match reaction, so... In terms of the lineup, apart from one thing, to be honest with you, I don't have any complaints. I don't have any complaints at all. I felt that it was a very decent lineup. I didn't mind it. It was Amos in goal, as per usual. Gunter was right back. Oshilaja was centre back. Halle fucking Luya was he at centre back. Thank God. So happy he got a start. A chance to prove himself. Pierce was alongside him. Martson at left back. Martson finally in his correct position. It was a 4-3-3, something we haven't seen since the start of the season. Morgan, Forster, Kasky and Gilby made up the middle three. And the front three was Paul Smith on the right, Connor Washington in the centre, and our new sign-in, Liam Miller, on the left. Honestly, I have no complaints about that lineup whatsoever. The only thing I do have a complaint about is the fact that Marcus Madison is not starting. And I think the rest of the fan base will be in agreement when they say Madison... Definitely should have been starting. He is, by quite a way, the best player we have ability-wise. Had chances. We we did have chances. We can't we can't say we didn't. We did. We had we had opportunities. The most lively player we had on that pitch. Not just for the first half, but the entirety of that game, was Liam Miller. And that's worrying because the kid's been here for for, for days. He's been here. Like he's, he's played 65 minutes. He looked good. I really did like Miller today. And it shows, it shows how badly we needed a player in that position. 
Alfie Doughty, massive loss in that position. We bring in Miller. And he looked good. He was cutting inside on that right foot. He had a good effort outside the box, which was well saved by Baxter. Forster Kasky forced a good save out of him as well. Uh, I think we crossed the ball in the box. It was clear the way it came to Forster Kasky. He had a shot on the weak foot. Again, very well saved by Baxter. I think it was Miller. He crossed the ball in. It was caught by Baxter. Baxter played the ball long towards Colby Bishop. Jason Pierce was man marking him. Pierce lets the ball bounce. Tries to head it back to Amos. Doesn't catch it well. Bishop latches onto it, lobs Amos, and heads it into an open goal for 1 0. A goal that Cholton would concede about 99% of the time when we do concede goals. The most typical Cholton goal we could concede. Our 31-year-old centre-half doesn't know the basics of defending. Why are you letting the ball bounce? What are you doing? And the thing is, Pierce has been prone to those mistakes for not just this season, but last year. It's those types of defensive errors that he's been making for a, quite a while now. And it's a worry when our most experienced centre-half is doing that. Oh, but don't worry, we don't need centre-backs in January. Don't you worry about that. At least Lee Bowyer seems to think that. They cut us open way too easily. Route 1 worked a treat for them. Our midfield, I'm tired of saying it now. Non-existent. Again. Connor Washington. Non-existent. Again. In the second half, we just, looked like we, we just looked like we didn't give a shit. We just didn't care. There was no fight. There was no passion. There was no aggression. There was no... Desire to win the ball or to keep hold of it. We gave the ball away countless amount of times. Ian Martson, abysmal in possession again. Chris Gunter, non-existent in defence. At one point when we were on the attack, he was in the fucking penalty area. Having shots. You're a right back. Baxter, as I say, was on steroids. Every shot we had was saved Parry the way, blocked. It just wasn't happening for us. Marcus Madison and Johnny Williams come on, attacking substitutions. Liam Miller, our most creative player, our most lively player, the only player on that pitch that really gave a toss from start to finish, he comes off. You take him off. And you keep Paul Smith off for another 10 minutes until he was relieved. Marcus and Johnny come on. Johnny... Didn't see him, to be honest with you. Didn't really see him. Marcus gets injured. <laughs> gets himself injured, which is just what we need right now, isn't it? It just wasn't going our way. And eventually, Accrington go and double their lead. Colby Bishop goes and double their lead. Forster Kasky makes an interception, loses it instantly. Ball crossed in. Cleared away. Comes to Ian Martson. Dispossessed straight away. Balls into Pritchard. He easily lays it off to Colby Bishop. He cuts past Oshilaja who slides in. Slots it away. 2-0. Game dead and buried. I don't know why I'm saying... I don't, I don't know why I'm saying game was dead and buried at 2-0. I said the same thing against Hull City. Game was dead and buried when we went 1-0 down. It's deflating watching us right now. It's so deflating. Two wins in ten. For a club like us, for a club in the position that we're in, it's unacceptable. It, it, it is quite simply unacceptable. I said in my previous video, we don't deserve to be top six. We don't deserve to be top half of the table from the way we're playing right now. And now we've fallen out of the top six. Let me ask all you Charlton fans this. Do you see us getting back in the top six anytime soon? Because I fucking don't. None of them look like they wanted to play for the badge at all, apart from Miller, who's not even our player. I don't know how many times we gave the ball away. Martson was absolutely shocking in possession. Gunter, nowhere to be seen. Again, in the defensive line. Pierce, abysmal. Washington, non-existent. Midfield, cut open. Madison comes on eventually, gets injured. Liam Miller comes off. What are you doing? Why is he coming off? Paul Smith, who I think should have come off instead of Miller. 
eventually came off for Ronnie Schwartz. The squad that we have, for the manager that we supposedly have, for the owner that we have, we really are shit. We really are. We're fucking abysmal. And it all comes back to the same question. Is it time that he goes? Is Lee Bowyer's time at this club up? And to be to be completely honest with you, if we lose to Rochdale, Rochdale, then he has to go. I didn't want it to come to this. I wanted Bowyer to succeed at this club. We can't accept much more of this anymore. Two wins in ten, outside the top six. Bowyer keeps going on about, oh, I'm, I'm not too keen about getting a defender. We need to keep getting attackers. Attack, 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 forwards. Need to be more clinical in front of goal. Need to take our chances. I make Bowyer right with the attack. We couldn't hit a barn door. We could have played until the end of 2021 and we wouldn't have scored. We need defenders. We need a midfielder that's actually going to be dominant. That's actually going to control the midfield area. Alex Gilby. What's happened to him? He started so well, Achilles injury, and he's faded. He has faded away, saying he doesn't care that Marcus Madison got injured and that he was jumping out of tackles. Publicly coming out and saying that you don't care that our best player, ability-wise, has received a long-term injury is outrageous. Seriously, do think he's lost the dressing room. And he really is just losing the plot. He's running out of excuses. He's panicking. I cannot see it improving until he wakes up. He brings in defenders. Stops losing his fucking marbles. To be honest with you, it's probably too little too late now. With him coming out and saying that about Madison, that is probably the nail on the head right there. I wanted him to be the man to lead us on this journey that he says we're going to go on. I wanted him to have that. And then ever so slowly, I'm saying... Keep him to the end of the season. Now I'm saying, give him January. Let him use the money that Sandgard is giving him. And let him fix the areas in the pitch so then we can start playing attacking-minded football with no negative tactics, with players playing out of position. And then tonight, I'm saying he's got until Tuesday night. I'm just, I'm just, I've am I'm been... I've just been so swayed and leaned towards this. And and to those people that are defending him and are still 100% bow you're in and you're using the excuses of he's stuck by this club, oh he's had the loyalty, he's saved this club, he's backed us from start to finish, if it wasn't for him we'd be in lead too. They are not excuses. That was in the past. Bowyer is not a god. In the present day, right now, it's not fucking good enough. I don't know what tonight's defeat was down to. Is it down to Bowyer? Is it down to the players? I don't know. And I don't care. I don't really care at this point. The main thing that is responsible for this bad run of form, and it, I say bad, fucking shit run of form, is Bowyer. Because of his tactics, his substitutions when we're trying to defend Leeds, playing Prattley and Watson at the same time, Negative tactics, players out of position. It's his fault. He's got us in this position. Like, I don't care that he got us promoted. I don't care if he's been through thick and thin with Roland and ESI. And he's stuck by this club because that's in the past. Right now, he's tactically inept, naive. If we lose, drop points. Or put in the exact same lethargic, two-bob, spineless performance tonight against Accrington, against Rochdale, who are in the bottom four and are one of the worst teams in this league, not just this season, but for a number of years now. He has to go. He has to go. It is... It, I'm done. I need to end this video because this is just... I don't want to shout out the camera much longer, to be perfectly honest with you. Thanks for watching this video. I'd appreciate it if you left a like, subscribed, turn on post notifications so you're notified of when I post more rants. Shout at the fucking camera about Boya and the fucking shit football that this club is playing right now. If you are Boya in, please give me a decent reason as to why he should stay. Other than he's stuck by this club, he got us promoted. He's shown loyalty. 
he's a legend of the club. I don't want to hear that anymore because it's not an excuse. Fix this mess or your time is up. Simple as that. Thanks for watching this video, guys. This has been Tyler Rowlinson. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later on.